Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure your speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, the firearm rebuild, retune, sound implementation, and, you know, system recoding continues to go wonderfully. Uh, this week I actually got a, uh, I got a whole bunch of different systems completed and uh, a couple more started. So to start off, let's start off uh, really small. One of the things that I did this week was to go into the code bases for sort of one-offs that exist within the game, like our old uh, rolling block uh, 50 black powder pistol here, and bring these over into our uh, new sort of sound system. Let's take a shot. Let's, uh, let's pretend we're out in a forest here. Beautiful. Oh, pop. Not huge. This is a, it's a pretty old cartridge. I believe this is 1860s or 1870s. Beautiful. Let's pop that over there. We, uh, we also have revolvers, which primarily they didn't need sort of really, really deep code changes, just uh, sort of sound migration and a little bit of tune-up as well as developing things like recoil profiles for them. We've got a, uh, a few new types of sounds uh, for them, sort of breach open and shut is a little more consistent. There's actually a sound when we load a speed loader into them, like so. Fire this uh this is our 44 Magnum. This one kicks. Switch over to warehouse. Let's see how she sounds indoors. Wonderful. And we've even got sounds for shell ejection. Beautiful. Of course, this uh let's let's take the uh the R8, which I know those of you who are righties are like, oh I wish. Wish it wasn't lefty. Just remember, you can click right on the touchpad to invert all double action revolvers to make them easier to load. Like so. So uh, let's see. Outside enclosed, maybe? Inside narrow. Forest. Love it. And remember, anytime you're he hearing sound stuff, this is all still very work in progress. We're, uh, you know, tuning and iterating on things as each time we sort of bring a new firearm class online, we're comparing how they sound to each other uh, and adjusting accordingly. Next up past uh, revolvers, we have the uh, break action shotguns. It actually got a little more of a code cleanup than just sound, in part because this is such an old system. In fact, I was a little sad to see some of it go because I actually blew out the old class and it was the oldest still functioning code base uh, in the game in terms of objects. Uh, so there's going to be a bit of a control change that comes with these break actions. Basically clicking up on the touchpad will open them, like so. We've got some new functionality in that we can continue to hold the foregrip on them now, which is granted more of a benefit for the long ones like the DT-11, uh, but give us more stability. It's important for uh, our recoil system, so here we have holding it. Beautiful. Pop that out, and then just one-handing it. That's how that kicks a good deal more. One of the reasons for the control change is I needed another sort of useful direction on the touchpad that was nice and clear. Uh, so we're going to take a look at uh, one of the new weapons that's going to be coming in Update 52. This is an old 1864 uh, Wells uh, sawed off. It's even got some of these cool little loops on the side for us to stow two extra shells. So we pop this open. What if we just shut this here and go to fire? It isn't going to fire. That's because this has manual exposed hammers. With a sort of modern break action like this, the internal hammer actually cocks on open. Whereas in this case, we actually have to click down once, twice, to actually cock the two hammers. Delightful. Let's go into a warehouse. Oh, see? Forgot to cock the hammers. Wonderful. 
And to go with it, especially because this has been a long requested uh, edition, we have a actual long double barrel break action now. This one is uh, from about 10 years later, I believe. Pop that down. Let's see, what do we want to do here? Outside and closed, maybe? Beautiful. Wonderful. Absolutely love it. So that is a, uh, a new addition to our firearm family. You'll notice she's a little wobbly. That's just a consequence of the fact that the fours on these are actually physical. I've not yet found a way to keep them from being a little wobbly while still keeping that physics behavior. Uh, I will continue to look into it, though. And then beyond that, lastly, they are still most certainly not ready for showtime. In fact, I only have two of them even operational, but I was just barely at the end of this week able to get the beginnings of the total recoding of the closed bolt receiver system going. So this is the code that is running this is now brand new compared to uh, the other ones. I uh, Scratch Rewrite actually built on it based on a bunch of stuff that I sort of learned rebuilding um, tube-fed shotguns just for reliability and other various features. We can deploy our stock. Stuff like, uh, let's see here, let's actually pop uh, a magazine in here. Actually, wish I had an empty one. Let's just about, let's do a, let's start off with a mag dump just so we have a uh, empty magazine to work with. And actually spawn lock that. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and mag dump, dump this. I don't actually know which reverb environment I had active there. Oh, so our bolt is now locked back. We'll keep that in there. And you'll notice now when we actually grab the charging handle and pull that back, it will actually pull the back bolt past its lock point. Uh, which is proper behavior. Um, it took, honestly, it's taken a lot of generations of, of implementing guns for me to get this type of behavior working really reliably because it's, you know, it's not a simulation. It's a, in, or rather, it's not an animation. It's a simulation. And the moment you get into really, really small movements that are fast, all sorts of bugs crop up. But the system is now working, uh, this is to say so, and I'm quite happy with it. Pop a new mag in. That's a uh, forest. Beautiful. Note uh, uh, also in this system is the ability to actually override things like the uh, load and unload sounds for magazines. So popping things like drums in and out actually sounds a little different. Beautiful. Inside narrow, inside warehouse, inside small, which should be really sharp, outside open. And outside and closed. Delightful. Boop. Clear that up. So yeah, so that's the uh, the progress thus far. Um, all the sounds that you hear on the uh, on the M4 here are still very much the, uh, the this is the first delivery of these that have even been implemented into the game. There's still a whole bunch of stuff that we're tuning for the intermediate level cartridges, but I love how everything is coming along so far. And the biggest thing that you know, the, this is one of the whole reasons that this sound upgrade has been so important is that the way that things work in the sort of current release build, and you may have noticed it firing, you know, an M4 or an M16 or a PPSH, is that the firearms that have really fast fire rates, the sound effects sort of step on each other, because I'm just spam firing them. They're not sort of separated into shot and reverb. And so you get all these terrible distortion effects, especially if firing two at once. And and so that that's that's not just how to put it the 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 sound update is both about sort of improving clarity as a whole removing existing artifacts and just bringing everything under one consistent umbrella it's the more firearms i get implemented the more 
more just reminds me that this is all worth the uh, insane level of work to uh, to get it operational. Anywho, let's jump out of VR and talk about uh, what's what I'm working on next and uh, sort of updated schedules for things. Yo! So we're out of VR now, as is evident by our uh, delightful HMD mark on our face here. Um, so what else is uh, going on and what's what's being developed? So as I showed, just showed you, the sort of closed bolt receiver system is now in progress of being re-implemented. It is by far the most difficult and complex code base uh, from a firearm standpoint to re-implement. And this has to do with all of the idiosyncratic behavior that we find across the breadth of weapons that implement it. Bolts that rotate specific ways or possibly sort of dip down at the end, such as the sort of Garand and uh, M14. Uh, we've got various types of charging handles, some of which move linearly, some which can actually lock up. I know that's super broken right now uh, in the release build of the of the game for things like the MP5, and that's just because straight up I didn't know close to what I know now uh, about a year and a half ago in terms of making these systems work and about having sort of designing bulletproof logic where cross interactions between systems uh, were reliable and executed in reliable orders. So that's a, I'm going to be sort of re-implementing the sort of closed bolt weapons in order of idiosyncratic features. So you're going to see all of the weirdest ones first uh, in my devlogs. Um, because I need to actually make those various bits of them work, and then I'll go back and sort of fill in and re-implement all of the ones that are sort of function functionality carbon copies of, uh, of others. So it's going to take a bit. Um, it's probably going to take me at least two weeks of work just getting all these closed, closed bolt weapons back online. There's like 65 of them to re-implement. Uh, you know, both uh, some of the stuff that goes in the machine pistol category, like the Tech 9 and the VZ64. Um, some of the shotguns run off of this code base, so stuff like the Sega 12 and the KWG do. Um, and of course, just tons of SMGs, rifles, battle rifles, etc. So it's it's a lot, um, but uh, but I'm I'll be able to get through it. I just have to head down and just plow ahead and try not to have the uh, the tedium kill me. Um, from a scheduling standpoint, it's still looking like the fur, the sort of end of February slash first week of March is when I'm sort of targeting, uh, update 52. Um, there's still going to be a beta beforehand. I might even do that next week based on how things will go. It'll just be something where like two or three scenes will be active that will each have a sort of baked in reverb environment for you to try just so that I can get sort of the new firearms out in your hands. You can shoot them in context and see if everything sounds right. Um, the levels on everything won't necessarily be super balanced uh, when it comes to, like, say, target hits, because I haven't gotten to those yet. Um, but it'll be enough that I can start getting feedback um, and just hopefully catching bugs in all of these newly re-implemented uh, guns. Um, the only other thing from a scheduling standpoint that's relevant is that I'm probably going to have to this month go in for some oral surgery. Yay! And I have no idea how long that will lay me low being on like painkillers and just being like not in the mood to sit in front of a code window or place an HMD that presses on this part of my face. So I have no idea how that's going to affect the schedule yet. I'm just going to keep plowing ahead full speed until the date happens whenever when, whenever I schedule that uh, and uh, we'll just you'll just have to keep checking in with me each Friday to see how that goes um but it's the uh, the as in terms of what update 52 is going to constitute uh it's going to be the largest update the game has ever gotten in terms of the magnitude and the number of changes uh the number of new firearms at once is going to be quite significant as as i re-implement each category i always sort of add at least one more new gun just to make sure i haven't broken anything or missed some piece of implementation functionality uh in that process. So yeah, so that is about it. I will stop chatting all of your ears off and uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful weekend and excited about the new toys uh, coming and uh, yeah, I will see you all next Friday. Peace.